I actually, and also given uh, what, I mean, whatever little I've read and seen of your works earlier, given your obsession with Calcutta in a way, with cities in a way. Calcutta more, with yes. Calcutta, yes. and yeah. I was actually wondering how did this whole, uh, I mean, you know, when you first began to think about this film, how was it? I mean, was it was was this the kind of structure you had in mind, or what was that like? If you could just start with that, maybe. Well, I I've been called a self-indulgent filmmaker before, and no doubt will be again. But uh, one of the not a bad thing. well, sometimes. So one of the things that I I like to do, and I think uh, Ibrina's still sitting here. She hasn't run away. Good. Uh, she will vouchsafe, and uh, is that with Eleven Miles, with Tales from Planet Kolkata, and with Memories of Milk City the three earlier films that I made, which were, uh, is that you have certain, a certain set of ideas and certain sets of images, mm -hmm. sounds, maybe text, yeah. and you start to play with them. And then when you shoot, what, what you actually get in the shoot dictates how you structure the film or what actually goes into the film, rather than having a super clear idea of what you want. Mm -hmm. And then there's a little bit of wiggle room depending on what you get. Uh, I am of, among those filmmakers who actually goes out and starts shooting and looks at the footage a lot, thinks of the experience of what one has seen, what's going on. And also, if you have the luxury or the possibility, which in this case I did, which you, you have a small camera mm. and you're shooting and thinking about stuff as you go along, mm. you're not scrunched into a shooting schedule of two weeks or one month or anything like that. So, for example, uh, the first sequence I kind of shot as playing around with was the one on which the Marco Polo voiceover comes. Mm. That was shot in 2009, probably at some point. Uh, the police rally and stuff was shot uh, after Rizwan dies and Mamata is agitating. So that was also 2000. I mean, the film was shot in, in bits and pieces across a year and a half, actually. Mm. And very small. I mean, you have a small camera, you go out, you shoot. Something's happening outside your window, you shoot. The Stephen Court fire takes place while I'm actually editing the film. Mm -hmm. So this massive fire takes place. So then that changes what's happening with the film. So then I go with a proper film crew, you know, Ranu's there, the sound recordist is there. And we're actually shooting on Park Street, what, whatever's going on, yeah. and shooting the cameras, shooting the fire and the cops and all that stuff. So uh, the film kind of grows organically. And this is, as I said, it's 10 poems, if you like, and three songs. And they're numbered oddly to indicate that there are many more poems possible. Why? Like, it's all about Calcutta, so why is it called My Rio, My Tokyo? Okay, so uh, two, two references there. One is uh, Rinal Sen made a film called My El Dorado about Calcutta in the early 80s. It's not to my mind a very good film, but it was the first kind of sort of famous filmmakers were asked to make a, a sort of tribute to their cities. So Rinal Sen made one about Calcutta called My El Dorado. And at that time, I remember thinking that why is Minalda calling it El Dorado, which is a rural, um, sort of heavenly palatial retreat or something. What does it have to do with the city? So I was thinking about that and and then about this whole Italo Calvino, my invisible city stuff, that every city that you visit is colored by the first city that you know. Or if, if you come from a city, the, the mother's Ur city that you come from. So, everything being schizoid in Calcutta, it's both my Rio de Janeiro and my Tokyo. Tokyo is a kind of contained or a different kind of craziness, northern craziness, if you like. And Rio is a southern craziness. Calcutta is somewhere in between. It is neither Rio nor Tokyo. That's the joke. But my Rio, my Tokyo. So in that sense. 